on a new rail link between Singapore and Johor Bahru is expected to be signed next year, and that's what Singapore and Malaysia announced a few days ago. And they say the news is likely to spur investor interest in property in JB, but they feel it's important for investors to do their homework. In fact, one investor we spoke to is taking a cautious approach, worrying that the ringgit will fall further after he buys. Peter Ezekiel rents a home in Johor Bahru while waiting for his new flat in Singapore to be ready. The 46-year-old lawyer says he's done his sums and renting across the border is cheaper for him than doing the same in Singapore. One of the problems Mr. Ezekiel says he faces is the issue of travelling across the causeway and back. Very often he says he has to deal with traffic congestion which affects his ability to cross borders in a timely fashion. Mr. Ezekiel therefore welcomed news that Singapore and Malaysia are moving ahead with the rapid transit system to enhance connectivity between countries. He says this may influence his decision to continue renting or even buying a Johor property in future. I'm looking at safety, I'm looking at convenience, uh, proximity to Singapore. These three factors are the, to me, and uh, of course comfort, you know, you want a certain, but these are the three to four factors that bear on my mind when I'm looking at a rental property. However, if I'm looking for a re a, a investment to buy, then I'll be looking at potential capital gains. He says the Malaysian ringgit's relative weakness has been holding him back from a purchase, even though transport links are set to improve. The rapid transit system will connect Woodlands North Station on the Thompson East Coast Line to Bukit Chaga in Johor. But no firm timeline has been set by Singapore and Malaysian officials on when the system will commence. Very close to Bukit Chaga, other than the fact that it is a, it is a, a bottleneck for transport. Um, just within a kilometre of it, we have got some malls, we have got some uh, low density residential and to fill up that residential as they start to compete I think would already be a challenge. We haven't seen very much uh, announcements in terms of real business investments. Uh, big manufacturers who are, let's say, within 30 kilometres who are hiring many staff. Analysts say major economic activities needed to buoy Johor's property scene, particularly around where transport links to Singapore will be improved. This is something they say investors have to watch closely before assuming risks associated with sinking money into a development across the causeway. They need to do a lot of due diligence checks. We're talking about ensuring that if they're buying a property there, whether the developer is a sound developer, one with a reputation to complete their projects. Uh, one is to be also familiar with Malaysia law, the property laws behind buying property there. And so analysts are saying it's very much a buyer of US situation, especially in cases of significant investment. It was a relatively smooth first day of operations at the new Japanese Concourse Bus Interchange. It complements the existing interchange in the area and is the base for a new bus service. It was a relatively quiet start as the new Tampanese Concourse Bus Interchange opened to passengers for the first time. The place has facilities like a dedicated boarding point for those in wheelchairs and priority queues with seats for seniors and the disabled, charging points for mobile devices and 40 parking lots for bicycles are also available. Very, very nice. Feel comfortable also come here. The, the, old, the old interchange is a little bit cramped. Compared to the other interchange, it's quite congestion free. The new interchange has 12 bus parking lots and two berths for passengers to board. It's currently served by three bus services, including the new service 129. Commuters said operations were generally smooth, although at least one hiccup was reported. Because it's the first day, probably the driver not knowing the way so well. Instead of going turning to the right, he go and go straight, you know. So there was a, a bit of commotion there. Everybody was so worried, you know. Hey, where are we going? 
Bus service 18 and 39 also operate from the new interchange, moving from the current Tampanese bus interchange, accessible on foot by this path. Now this 250 meter walkway links the new Tampanese Concourse bus interchange with the existing Tampanese bus interchange that you see behind me over here. Now I tied myself and it took me about 5 minutes to get from point to point walking at a rather leisurely pace and most of the route is actually sheltered except for this portion at this pedestrian crossing. But some commuters had their concerns. I thought the distance is quite far because it's about 250 meters uh, relative to another interchange, the new extension of Singa, the Kamosu interchange, it's just opposite the road. Still a little bumpy because Hong Kong Swanson is not convenient for the wheelchair, I guess. To ensure commuters have a seamless journey, operator SBS Transit has deployed 40 additional staff to assist. It intends to do the same when schools reopen next year.